How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at natural and artificial transmutation. So our objectives will be to describe how artificial transmutation works and distinguish between natural and artificial transmutation. So let's let's take a look. So let's start with transmutations. What are those? So changes in the nucleus can lead to the change in the number of protons. And the number of protons is really important because the number of protons determines the atomic number. So if you change the number of protons, then you change the number of the element. So if you went from five to six protons, you've changed what the element is, right? So you change protons, you change what the element is. This is transmutation. So transmutation is the changing of one element into another by radioactive decay, nuclear bombardment, or some sort of similar process. So here's an example. I started with carbon that had six protons. It went through some sort of nuclear decay, and now the nucleus has seven protons, which is why it's atomic number seven, which changes what element it is. How did it do that? Well, it gave off a beta particle. All right, so that's just transmutation. We're changing elements. So natural transmutation. Natural just means that it happens naturally without people needing to do anything. So we start with one unstable nuclei, and it spontaneously decays and is converted into another element. Right, so convert into another element. How do you know if it's a natural transmutation if you're looking at the equation? Well, you start with one element, you end up with a new element, and it kind of looks like this. You start with one thing, you end up with something new, and then there's a particle given off. So if we take a look, here's some examples of natural transmutations. We got calcium with a mass of 37. It's going to give off a positron. And in doing so, changes the number of protons in the nucleus. So because that changed, we have a new element. That's a natural transmutation. Francium-220, same thing. It's given off an alpha particle, and the nucleus changed the number of protons, so we got a new element. Potassium-42, same deal. We started with one thing. It gave off a particle, and we changed the number of protons, which means we changed the element. So gamma is not a transmutation. I'm going to show you why. No new element is formed. So if I had iodine-125 and its nucleus was really excited and gave off a gamma particle, you can see a gamma particle has no charge, has no mass, so the element stays the same. The mass and the charge of that element doesn't change. It just gives off a bunch of energy. So gamma is just energy, not matter, so no change in what the element is. So artificial transmutation. It's artificial because we made it happen. It wasn't going to happen on its own. We did something to it, and it caused it to undergo this nuclear change. So how do we do that? Well, basically, we take a target nucleus, the thing that we want to change, and we shoot it with a particle bullet. So we can do that a couple of different ways. Here's an example. We have uranium-235, and here we're hitting it with a neutron, and that's causing the uranium to split into two new elements. So that's transmutation we caused it to happen because we introduced that neutron so it's artificial so how can we get nuclei to collide uh, if you go on youtube and check out what is cern large hadron collider lhc end of the world it's a good video that explains one of the ways that we do this so the way we can do that is we can use magnetic fields to accelerate a particle bullet so the particle bullet has to have a charge so it interacts with the magnetic field so if i have this positive particle right here one thing i can do is hey let me make right here a negatively charged magnet and right here a positively charged magnet because how is that going to interact well the positive charge is going to push that positive thing away from it and the negative charge is going to pull that positive particle towards it now once i do that i can quick turn it off and flip this negative change it to a positive so i can now instead of pull it push it away from and you can kind of see it happening right here right so the negative charge pulls that positive particle forward, but then we switch it to be a positively charged pole, and we just keep doing that over and over and over, and we can time it so that that positive particle is going to leave here with a bunch of speed, and we can have that collide with some other nucleus. So the thing to note here is we got to get it going really fast, because if I'm trying to hit a positive nucleus with a positive particle, it's going to want to deflect because like charges repel each other. So it's got to be going so fast that it overcomes that repulsion and actually collides with the nucleus. 
Another way we can do it is we can use neutrons. And the great thing about neutrons is that they are neutral. We don't have to overcome the charge. So because it has no charge, we don't have to worry about having to get it go as fast. And this con is commonly used in research and medicine. So we hit that nuclei with a neutron. We've caused it to become unstable. It goes through some decay and we've made a new element. So how do we know if it's an artificial transmutation? Well, you're going to want to look at what we already talked about. So you're going to have to start with a target and then a bullet. So on the reactant side, you have two things, you know, your, your nucleus that you're hitting and the bullet that you're hitting it with, and you end up with a new element. And then usually there's a bunch of other stuff. All right. So if we take a look at these examples here, I got beryllium. I hit it with a proton, a hydrogen atom or yeah, hydrogen nuclei, and it causes a change, a transmutation, if you will to make lithium and an alpha particle. So here again, we start with two things on the reactant side. We end up with a new element and other stuff, other particles being given off. Well, why do we do artificial transmutations? What's the whole point of it? Well, first, we want to make some desirable radioisotopes. There are, are a lot that are used in medical treatments. So we may be trying to make a specific new isotope. And the only way to do it is if we do it, we can't find it in nature. We can also use these artificial transmutation as energy sources. So we can use uranium, we can introduce some neutrons and get a nuclear chain reaction going to power an energy plant or something. And to learn more about what makes up everything in the universe, right? So if we made these really energized charged particles and we collide them together like in the Large Hadron Collider, we can look at what particles it breaks up into. And that's going to tell us a lot about what makes up the universe and it's also recreating the conditions immediately after the Big Bang, and we can learn about what the universe must have been like then. So here's some practice. Identify the following reactions as, as, as either natural transmutation or artificial transmutation. I challenge you to pause it and actually try. All right, well, let's take a look. In this first example, we have a nucleus and we have a particle. So this is going to tell me that it's artificial transmutation. I have two things in my reactants giving me a new element and a particle being given off. Same thing here. I have two things that I'm starting with and I end up with a new element and particles given off. So that tells me that it's artificial. Here I have one nuclei all by itself and it's spontaneously breaking up into a new element and a particle. So that tells me that it's a natural transmutation. Did it on its own. Same thing with this next example. I started with carbon-14 all on its own and it spontaneously broke down into a new element and giving off a particle. So that is also going to be a natural transmutation. Right here, I have two things on my reactant side. I have a nitrogen nuclei and I have an alpha particle that I'm hitting it with, giving me a new element and a particle. So that's going to tell me that, hey, this is artificial. I did that. And this last one was a trick question. It's neither. This isn't a transmutation. I started with uranium-239. I ended up with uranium-239. Gamma didn't change the atomic number. So this is not a transmutation because we didn't get a new element. Not a transmutation if we don't end up with something new. All right, so which way will things decay? If I got all these different isotopes, how do I know how it's going to decay? So each isotope will decay in a particular way. It's either going to give off an alpha particle, a beta particle, a positron, or it's going to give off gamma radiation. And we're going to look it up using our reference tables. So we go to table N, and you just look it up. Carbon-14, hey, I found carbon-14. It's got a half-life of 5,715 years, and its decay mode is going to be a beta particle. All right, so what about P32? So I just look it up. Find P32. I found it. It gives off a beta particle. All right, what about uranium-238? I just look it up. Uranium-238, found it right here. It gives off an alpha particle. So table N is your friend. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, summarize right now. Check yourself. Can you describe how artificial transmutation works? And can you distinguish between natural and artificial transmutation? I hope you can. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.